How's it going, Shaq? That's uh, not too bad. How are you doing? I am. I'm good. I am. Uh, I am. I am a little more respectful than I was yesterday of the power of R and B. Um, I uh I had a great <laughs> day. <laughs> oh, yo, so I had a good night the night before. I worked hard. I stayed up all night. Uh-huh. I woke. I was gonna go to bed. But I had a, I was in a good mood. And even though I was tired, Gabby was like, yo, I got to go into the office. You might give me a ride. And I was like, hell yeah, shorty, I got you. I drove her to work. She bought me Starbucks. I was like in the euphoria of being like a productive adult, a loving husband. Right before I pull off, my daughter texts me. She says, like, hey, I got the school safe. I love you, dad. A check in Texas. She doesn't normally send me. Usually sends to Gabby. But because she saw me awake, she decided to send it. Really feeling like the well-rounded, happy, loving adult. Okay. You know? All right. Then I get in this drive that I got to make for an hour from Gabby's job to, to the house. She she works in, like, upstate New York. Normally, I play, like, 20, 30 minutes of Griselda. You know what I mean? Or some, like, 90s hip-hop that I love. But it felt like... It felt too early. For like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, there definitely is a time. There's a time and a place. Yeah, like I was like, I love my, I love my music, but like, there's a time where like, this is what I want. You know, I'm, I'm having a morning like, you know, iced mocha, and it's nine o'clock, and it's like beautiful out. The weather was great. This ain't the, this ain't the vibe for this. So right. I on, I was trying to think of music I love that I haven't heard in a long time that isn't this. I put on John Legend. I like this first, like, three albums a lot. Okay. All right. Shot. I I pulled off so happy. By, like, the fourth song, I was crying, yo. Like. Which which John Legend album? So, I had, like, a mix okay. of uh, the first three. Get Lifted. I'm forgetting the name of the second one. Right, uh, right. And uh, 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 I think Revolver. Okay. Or, so, like, I really hit every note of Save Room. <laughs> every note shot. Like, yo, <laughs> I sang the fuck out of that, yo. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I was in the car. Yeah, I went through everything. I was like, I broke up with, uh, I felt like somebody was being grimy about, and like, only loving me for my success with the stereo. Okay. You know what I mean? Then I, I felt I felt sad and I'm doing the Snoop ad libs from I could change. Oh wow. I went through all of that shit, yo. Oh my goodness. And like, man, like I I like it, it took a solid like 10 minutes of me getting out the car later where I was like, yo, what the fuck is going on? I'm in a good place. Like, why am I crying? Like, uh-huh. why am I so moved by this? You know? Uh and it's strictly how good the songs are and how dope his voice is, admittedly. I like the writing on those songs. Okay. Um, but man, like, I, I, I haven't, I, I haven't vibed to a R&B or a sung album in a long time or sung music. Like, I'll play, like, an R&B song mm-hmm. in the mix of my music, especially if I'm driving. But, like, I haven't done a sustained hour of R&B music in a long time. And I didn't realize that I was doing that to protect myself. Because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yo, <laughs> I didn't realize I had this many tears. Uh, like, I was, yo, I'm in a good place and I'm crying this much. If I was sad, I can't play any of this shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> yo. <laughs> you just start seeing meaning in every song. Like, it, it, it was too much. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I was blown away by the power of that. I couldn't play it anymore. Okay. Um, but I really love those albums. Uh, mm-hmm. Shots to John Legend. Um, but like, yeah, you gotta keep them away from me. Uh, here's have you ever seen him live? I haven't. Okay, here's the thing about John Legend. Lot I don't think, and I'm not as deep into John Legend as I could be, I guess. Um, but I enjoy uh, songs. I enjoy you know the first couple of albums. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't think that there is a recording of him that has properly captured how good he is live. Mm, he is it. unbelievable live. 
And it's not that he's doing a whole bunch of tricks or, or anything. He just has a ridiculously strong voice. Yeah. And it's very, the emotion in it um, is it will grab you by the collar of your shirt and will oh. shake you around. And I like the first time I've seen him live like twice. And the first time was like on uh, a tour with like a bunch of rappers maybe. And he yeah. was, it, it might've been the spit kicker tour or something like that. And he, um, so it was a show with like, Dela and uh oh I feel like Common was on it. Like there were uh, there were a lot of people and then he came out and he sang um what like uh, I think uh she don't have to know. Yeah. Um or or he don't have to know or whatever. And um yo, he got to towards the end of that song and he's just wailing and there's a full band. It's not just him and his piano. Because yeah. I think his very first recording is like a live recording of just him and the piano. But this was like a live band. And he's blowing so hard that I said to myself in the audience, I was like, brother, slow down. <laughs> this is your first song. Yeah, pace yourself. You, yeah, you still got 30 minutes left, my man. Yo. Slow. Yeah, you haven't even gotten to the hits yet. Yo. John How are you going to do it. ordinary people when I'm crying at your <laughs> infidelity <laughs> anthem? Yeah. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> Sha, thank you. Thank you. Because that was what really turned. Sha, that's what pissed me off. I'm like, <laughs> right. why am I crying at these songs? This dude is the fuck boy on every yes, track. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, you. Yo, every track is you cheating on your chick. <laughs> None of these songs is good songs. Yeah. As, people, as the message. They're great <laughs> songs, but like you're an asshole with every track. And when yep. you're not an asshole on the song, you an asshole in the video. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. when you sing a song that like it like save room, the lyrics are like, oh, this is kind of sweet. Then you watch the video; it's him with thirty women. <laughs> right, just trying like, to get through wow. his day. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You was you was a savage, my G. Yeah, he was. He absolutely was. But man, live is like. Amazing. So if you get a chance, see him, but know, I, know that you will take sunglasses. Know that you will. <laughs> if the recording made you cry, know yeah. you will weep. I mean, I believe it. Weep. Like his, what's his song? Uh, Stay With You. Yeah. I've already decided that I will play that. Well, I had decided I would play that at, um, at my wedding. And then I was realistic and I was like, <laughs> Maybe more, more of like a memorial service. Like I just really like this song, but it's so it's. I call it. Um, that's he's in his Sam Cook bag. Yo. So when you in your Sam Cook bag, child, panties are being thrown at you while you're singing gospel songs. That's how strong. <laughs> that's how good your voice is. Oh, <laughs> and so he got it. He got it. He's so good live, and I. Like, I forget that because he is also every fucking where. Any television show that you've ever enjoyed in the past 10 to 12 years, my man had a finger in it somehow. He just showed it. up in it or he's producing. He just, he's, I swear he's just in everything right now. And at time, that has made me be like, damn, John Legend, sit down. Get out of my, <laughs> get out of my Sherman showcase or whatever it is I'm trying to watch. Like, get, I was watching old episodes of Project Runway and he shows up as like a guest. I'm like, what do you know about fashion? Why are you here? What are you doing here? You know, oh. and and he's everywhere. And I forget that. But then at like the, um, I think at Biden's inauguration when they had like the parties or whatever but everyone was just performing super far away outside in dc do you remember <laughs> by the inauguration and, and like they had tom hanks hosting it and he's freezing his fucking nose off and he, you know everybody was it was a rough you know it was a tough time but yeah. he's saying i forget what song he sang but he got like halfway through it and i was like oh i forgot this motherfucker could sing yeah, like yeah. He, I'm, I'm, true. yeah, no, he's really. I forgot he goes in, yeah, and he did, and I was just like, "That's right, Ugh, this mm -hmm. guy gonna make me cry in my house." 
And no I don't talk. even think it was that kind of song. It might have been like, <laughs> it might have been like feeling good, like Nina Simone's feeling good. And I was like, just, I, I've never cried to the Star Spangled Banner before. Yeah. What's happening? <laughs> like, it, yeah, he, you know, I'm no, oh. I'm no stan, but I'm here to tell you, if you see John Legend live, especially knowing that you were crying on your ride home, straight up, he the truth. And there, yeah. there is like an emotional connection because, like, uh. When Gabby and I were dating, we were trying to put together like a budget for like our theoretical wedding. Mm -hmm. And like we thought a lot about this and we decided there was like a this was early like late in the like SOHH days and like the online hip hop blogs and forums and like a, a email list of how much it costs to book certain people live got leaked. Okay. And John Legend was uh, $17,000 at the time because this was before his album, but, like, three songs had come out that, like, Kanye had produced. Right. So, like, as a big, like, you know, hip-hop fan, I loved him, loved his voice, loved the songs. And I told Gabby, I was like, yo, like, if this happens now, I'd say let's just book a small wedding at our church hall mm -hmm. and just spend the whole budget on John Legend singing at our wedding. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> Which sound, like, sounds crazy now. Yeah. But like, and that, and when I said that to Gabby, like Gabby uh, has like the ultimate, like consistently she checks me in life of like, you giving me a stupid idea. Uh -huh. And she looked at it. She thought about it. She's like, honestly, that's kind of fire. <laughs> and like, I knew like she was the one for real. Like it, that was so like much affirmation. Right. <laughs> that, like, every now and then she's going to give me a crazy idea. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, I was so hyped. Clearly can't afford the guy anymore. Yeah, no, uh, no, not at all. I, I mean? don't but, know. Honestly, try it. Real talk, man. Like, I if mean, I get any, like, level of success that I could talk to him, um, I would so tell him that. Because, like, that was literally, like, me and Gabby as kids dreaming of doing that. Right. You know what I mean? I'd love to put that together one day. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, and we still haven't technically done a wedding wedding, be, you know, uh, we had, you know, the babies on the way, budget changes. I hear you. Uh, you know what I mean? That's me reassuring myself, by the way, people. Uh, uh sure, sure. <laughs> but yeah, like, so I didn't realize I had this much emotional John Legend baggage to get out <laughs> until this car ride where like I did a, a nice thing. It was a small thing for my wife, but it was a a really nice day to start a nice way to start the day with my wife that I don't normally get to have. You know what I mean? Cause normally like I sleep in during this part of the day. She's and she gets ready on her own. So it was just cool to kind of have like a picturesque morning. Like I worked hard. I woke up. I got to see the kids get ready. I get to see my wife get ready, offer her a ride to work. We had Starbucks in the morning together. <laughs> I, I was in the euphoria of the day of being a good man. And then I play this dude. Yo, he fucked my head up, man. <laughs> John Legend is banned from my car. Straight up, like, out of love, like, and respect right. of the powers that he possesses. I, I can't, I can't have that and then just go to meetings. Like, <laughs> I had to, like, yo, I, like, what if I had to do a podcast right after? I can't be happy. No, you know, yeah, I mean, that's true. That's after true. that shit, like, I can't be silly. You know, it, it would have been crazy. Would have yeah. been. Yeah. No one wants a whole brand. No one wants a weepy. No one wants you weepy. That, Real that's talk, so man. Y'all already saw me with the Diddy news. I can't have that <laughs> two times in the same month, yo. Like, <laughs> oh man, let's get into the news. <laughs> okay. Uh, none of Forbes's billionaires under thirty are self-made for the first time in fifteen years. That's right. Uh, for the first time since two thousand nine, none of those who made Forbes' list of billionaires under thirty generated the massive wealth on their own. This year, 18 of the 25 youngest on the world's billionaires list inherited their wealth. Uh, the statistic is partly... <laughs> <laughs> oh, due to, my God. <laughs> the statistic is partly due to the past self-made billionaires aging into their 30s and not getting replaced by others in the same financial situation. Um, the hefty inheritances are also the start of what the uh, outlet is calling a long-anticipated generational wealth transfer. Trillions are expected to change hands every year as the affluent elderly pass away and leave their fortunes to descendants. 
Uh, the title of youngest billionaire in the world is a 19-year-old Livia Voigt of Brazil. Uh, the college student, who has a net worth of $1.1 billion, has a minority stake in her late grandfather's electrical equipment production company, WEG. Uh, she was uh, accompanied on the list by her older sister, Dora, all of 26 years old. Let's stop making these lists. How about that? Real talk, man. Because now, <laughs> now it's like, you know what? I'm just tired of reboots. How about that? I'm tired <laughs> of a reboot. I'm tired now of I'm a reboot. I'm sad about John Legend and money, okay? <laughs> I just, you know what? You're, it's never going to be the same. Stop making Ghostbuster movies. We don't want another version of The Office. We don't want None. just like just stop with the reboots. Let's have original ideas. That's what it is. Nobody mm -hmm. can nobody can have an original idea anymore because it's not cost effective. Nobody's no. trying to hear for I mean that's what's happening to Hollywood, right? Like big is, facts. So now we're just stuck with these with the offspring of the people who were rich before and all they did was just be born and and make it this long. Well, and now it's just going to be, that's like here, these are, you know, it's being true to the, it's not a list of the most innovative people with a lot of money. It's fair. a list of people under a certain age with a lot of money. And at a certain point, and this is the point, <laughs> the wealth transfer or whatever the fuck, it, it, the, it's just going to be <laughs> like, oh, well, oh, well, <laughs> I mean, what else? <laughs> Oh man, I can't. I that's too early to have that kind of money, man. It's too yeah. much money for everybody, period. But like, the nineteen-year-old should not have a billion dollars. They should not. They should not have a billion dollars, and also they should not be listed. It's like, don't tell yeah. me. Like now she's she's got a huge. Like if she didn't already have a, you know, just a bullseye on her. Um, yeah, yo. Like it. I don't know if. Because I'm sure she's moving in circles where she's not had to consider this. But, like, how are you moving through the world with everybody knowing you have that kind of money? What are your friends like? You have yeah. friends? You don't have no friends. Girl, stop. Real talk. <laughs> you ain't got no friends. <laughs> you ain't got friends in years. You. No. Real talk. Mm, come on. Real talk. Yo, real, I'm, I'm almost sad for you, Olivia. Almost. 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 <laughs> Oh, man. In other news, uh, UK minister confirmed as the 12th target in the Westminster honey trap scandal. That's right. Uh, serving uh, government minister is among uh, 12 men now known to have uh, been targeted as in a suspected honey trap scandal and enveloping the Westminster's uh, politics. Uh, Politico revealed Wednesday morning that at least six people working in uh, Westminster, a senior a uh, labor MP, four party staffers, and a political journalist had received unsolicited messages from two suspicious mobile numbers by users calling themselves alternatively Abby or Charlie. In the hours out after the story was initially published, six more people working in and around Westminster contacted Politico to say they had received near identical messages from one or both of the numbers in question. Several of the 12 were sent naked pictures in an attempt to lure them in. Uh, the latest targets included serving Minister Rishi uh, Sunak's government, a uh, backbench Tory MP, a former MP, another political journalist, a broadcaster, and a manager of, of an all-party parliamentary group. All have asked to remain anonymous for now. Okay, hold on. Because I had to think about what a honey trap was. Um, so they were just <laughs> getting text messages from somebody who was just flirting with them and sending them pictures and what what they get out of it yeah i i so i was reading this they were trying to make it look like this is a security scam right like okay. there's like a cyber security hustle gotcha. where like all right you know they're able to like get their private numbers maybe get them to put a virus on their phone or get private information etc cetera, etc cetera. Okay, i think so that's what we're gotcha. supposed to be getting from this okay all right i mean <laughs> Now, okay. personally, mm -hmm. I think one of these dudes is just actually cheating on his girl. You think so? Yeah. And he said, oh, I think it's a phishing scam. Yeah, he said, oh, you, you don't got this too? <laughs> Yo, tell him you got it. Tell him you got it. Yeah, we all got it. Uh -huh. See, honey, it's not just me. 
Right. Sure. That's what I think this is. You think that? Okay. <laughs> That's what, like, I, mean, I don't know. It just felt like too much, like, I, I feel like scammers are smarter than this. I feel like politicians aren't smarter than this. This seems like a politician excuse. Um, I, you know what? Honestly, now that you put it that way, because I was going to say men are stupid. Yeah. And a lot, you know, this seemed to happen to men. Um, uh, mm-hmm. because they, they'll take any flirtation, any, well, this is the wrong number, but let's talk kind of thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's just like, uh, this dummy, but I, huh, mm-hmm. it, it you may actually, you know what, Gaster, you may be on to something. Oh, because no, it this just, is it's written up in such a way and such flowery and all this and blah blah blah. And it literally could be just a guy who got busted. Real talk. I think he called in a favor, said, Joe, like, I'll get you an exclusive next month, but I need you to write an article right now. Yeah. Especially now that we see how the press uh in the UK works with regards to the royal family. Yeah. Like, absolutely, you know, politicians certainly have their reporters in their particular pockets straight up so i feel like he got caught out there by his missus Mm -hmm. and he was like you never believed me i'm telling you (laughs) look it's in the paper see all right it's like a week later and they've been having this fight you've been sleeping in like a really stiff sofa from the 1800s (laughs) you know what i mean (laughs) and dude is pissed off he's like i can't get good rest all the tough thing on the sofa you know what i mean (laughs) he's like i ain't even do this shit I ain't want those pictures, you know? And now, mm-hmm. like, he had to, like, get a backstory created. Now some poor writer had to ruin their integrity. Oh, you know? they don't have integrity. Come on now. <laughs> if, they, if they're willing to do this, there's no integrity. There's very, mm nah. Real talk. Yeah. No, you one, know? no one lost sleep over this. <laughs> <laughs> they probably do this kind of stuff for so many people. Like, yeah, what does he want? We'll give him the number two excuse. You know, like, there's no... <laughs> Yeah, I'll even do the texting for him. Don't worry about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's good. Right, yeah. He, what he was, was, I'm Charlie? Charlie. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> UK going UK, baby. Uh, yeah. <laughs> finally, uh, I quit my job to enter contests full time and how I've won over $44,000. That's right. Uh, Rebecca McBain, 37, makes her living entering contest and has won over $44,000 in prizes in seven years, I don't, I, I don't, that doesn't sound. Yeah, like that's a not. That's not big deal. Yeah, I, <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah, that's like using coupons. But I mean, <laughs> there's something to this because I did work with a guy um, once uh, who I did not like. I did not like him at all. Um, but a thing that he would do all the time was enter contests. So okay. he was always coming in with like stuff like. Hey, do you guys want this? And I'm like, where did you get this? And he's like, I entered a contest. No one ever enters these things. So I always win. And he was winning all the time. He won a lot of concert tickets. He won just a lot of random things. And he's just like, yeah, no, no one ever enters. Oh, yeah. So there's something to this. But I mean, like $44,000 in prizes over seven years is not that great. Yeah, like it's definitely not a job. Right. It's cool, but that's not a job. My, you, you, didn't, yeah. you didn't quit your job for doing this. Like, that's wild work. Yeah, that's not, you know, that's, and also it's in prizes. It's not money. Yeah, nah. You know what I mean? $44,000 like, in like, in like tied fucking. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's no wild. good. That's no good. Like container. Well, actually I could use, I probably could use about $34,000 <laughs> in containers. <laughs> That would be nice. <laughs> but that's, you know, that's only one competition. I'm not going to win that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> she spends about uh, two hours a day entering at least 100 contests while her uh, youngest child naps. Said so depending on the prize, <laughs> she'll either, either keep it or sell it to raise money for her family. Okay. Um, the best prizes I've won was a trip to the Isle of Man. The, it was just beautiful. Uh, the company that ran it paid for everything, food, cabin, and ferry, all the kids' activities, and it was a wonderful few days. Uh, some of the prizes are small, but they accumulate over time. Uh, they're not life-changing, she admits, uh, maybe 63 to 126, very specific numbers, okay. Uh, 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 gift cards, clothes for kids and adults, a lot of toys, pet products, and stuff for the house. Interesting. Uh, no. Without it, we probably wouldn't be able to afford to go on holidays or extra days out. So it helps uh, to fund that, she says. 
Oh, well, good Platform. for her. Yeah, congrats. Yeah, yeah. I ain't mad. Uh, I wouldn't pitch this as a job, but this is dope. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah this yeah. is cool. It's a nice little hobby. Real talk, yo. Keep it pushing. I, I ain't mad at this. I got a friend that, like, uh, hasn't bought McDonald's in years. He just asks people for over seats. And he does oh, and he does a little thing. Uh, okay, yeah. now that's a hustle. That's a little bit Straight of a hustle. Up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I never buy McDonald's. He's like, I just get a free Big Mac. Just give me, like, 10 minutes. And he, <laughs> 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 so, yeah, he just picks a receipt up off the floor, does his little survey, and he good money. That's very funny. It ain't bad, yo. If you would like to send us all your old McDonald's receipts. I love free <laughs> burgers, you know? <laughs> all you got to do is, like, subscribe to the show, baby. Your Apple, Spotify, listener, we appreciate your ratings. Four stars. You ball up your receipts. You don't keep the money. Come on, that's a free sandwich you just threw out. You know what I mean? At least use the app. You get bonus points, you know? And they give you the free stuff that way. Five stars. You're using the app and you're keeping the receipt. You double dip in respect. Okay? That's how you do it. If uh, you have any articles you want us to cover, please DM us directly on Twitter or Instagram at Silky Jumbo or at Gastro Monte. Uh, shout out to Sweet to FCBLJ. Uh, with all that said, I am the uh, about to get myself a free Big Mac. Gastro <laughs> Monte. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm going to get some fries. I'll get some fries. Amen. You know what I mean? Large fries from Soleil Shark. You know what I mean? <laughs> this has uh, been an unhealthy episode of the World <laughs> Catch y'all next time. <laughs> Peace.